Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. And I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, I had a question last night. I was at dinner, and uh, I was with some friends. I was talking about the fact that we have a website called Open to Hope with a mission of helping people find hope after loss. And she looked at me and said, oh, my gosh, my niece one year ago was in a grocery store, and a man came in and shot her in the head for no reason. That's he, was awful. Thinking, he was thinking about killing himself, and instead of doing that, oh, no. he shot her for no That's reason. Horrible. And killed her. Now, totally, incredibly traumatic. The girl was 17 years old. Wow. And her sister, of course, is just, you know, it's been one year, mm-hmm. and she just wonders how long does it take was her question for me and what can I do? So she wants to know how long it takes to grieve. Yeah. How long? Yeah. So yes. When will she feel better? How long will it take her to get more stabilized? Because she, you know, she just sees her totally torn apart. And so she sees her sister who is the child's mother and the child is dead, totally torn apart, mm-hmm. which is completely understandable because it's only been a year. And a year is just a moment in time when you've had a child die. I mean, yep. we th- you think you're going to be with your children forever, right? You think you're going to die before them. The, and the family is uh, from the South and they're hunters and they have guns and things like that. And they've always been, you know, advocates of gun, the NRA and that kind of thing. And here this guy comes in and randomly shoots. So interestingly enough, one of the things we often see is happening in this case is the father has now gotten involved with the Rifle Association and talking about safer guns because we often see guys doing this, don't we, Heidi? The father takes action. So she sees her, her uh, sister's husband as being more, um, more with it, capable, and my sister's not doing well. Because so the, the husband is get, getting gathering around the, the gun control laws, it sounds like. And I don't know what kind of gun it was. I mean, you know, there's hunting gun rifles, and that's one thing. And then there's assault rifles, which are a whole nother thing. So, uh, so it sounds like he's got, a, he's got a mission, is what right. you're saying. He's trying and to make mission, eating. Yes, and he's got a mission about gun control. And his wife doesn't have that, and she's in a different place than he is. Mm-hmm. which is really hard because, you know, we do grieve at different rates in different places and in different times. So, you know, we're all going down our own path. And, it, you know, it's hard when you're married and your husband's in a different place because you and dad didn't always grieve the same. No, absolutely not. And uh, dad went to work. So, yeah, so it is a different kind of thing. And with this family, um, she's seeing what uh, Pat is seeing is she's seeing her sister as being less functional because she's looking at him and going out. But, you know, Candace Leitner, who started Mothers Against Drunk Driving, was one who went out right away. Um, She actually, like the next day, uh, her uh, sister-in-law said to her, I think you're going to start an organization that's going to be called MAD. And Mm -hmm. she spent her whole time in legislation. But she said that you need to grieve. She said if she could give anybody advice, it would be Don't jump into it like I did. So what you have to realize, though, is you're going to go back and grieve. Right, exactly. And the other thing I want to say is that sometimes men will look like they're doing better than they really are. Because as you know, we wrote a book called Real Men Do Cry with Eric Kippel, who was a quarterback for 10 years with the Detroit Lions. And what Eric said in this book, Real Men Do Cry, was that men have been taught to suck it up, walk it off, not show any emotion. Big boys don't cry. They've been given all these messages, so they have to wear this mask, which makes the world think that they're not grieving, mm-hmm. when, it, when in reality they are grieving, they're just not doing it as publicly. Right. So, you know, um, a year is not a long time for anybody, and for any kind of loss. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, that first year you're pretty frozen, 
and you're kind of going through the first, the first Christmas or, you know, and you've got a lot of family support. One of the problems with, um, you know, looking like you're really functional and all that is sometimes uh, people expect you to have moved on after the second or third year. But I was telling Pat that the second year is going to be tough for her sister and for her brother-in-law because um, that's when you start thinking, well, people have often called me and said, I feel like I'm going crazy. because, And I say, that's because you're thawing out. You're actually taking in more. Your mind and body are able to take in more at this time. So you're kind of saying, wow, this is going to be my life. So, you know, that realization that they're not coming back, right, Hyde? Right. It, it's, it's really hard when the permanent sets in and you think, oh my gosh, I've gotten through all the firsts and I still feel, I thought I was going to get feel better and I feel worse. Mm -hmm. um, and what am I going to do now? I mean, to wrap your arms around your new identity takes a long time. Who am I without this person in my life? Mm -hmm. And building a new history. Yes, right? exactly. Right? You remember the Christmases you were with them that first year. Yes. And then, you know, or other holidays or birthdays or whatever, as you move down, you can start to build a little history. Well, we did this. They're not in every snapshot that, that you take. So building the history. They're, they're not in any snapshots that you take. Right. Exactly. Going forward. That's yeah. the hard part, right? That's the hard um, part and the good part that you are building some different memories. Right. And, and it's hard because you, you feel like you're leaving the person behind. So the thing is you have to figure out new and different ways to, to bring them into your life on a continuing, in a continuing bond way, metaphorically, and keep their memories alive and keep meaning and purpose in your life and honor them through the work that you do. Mm -hmm. And rituals. And I did tell Pat also to say her uh, niece's name and to not be afraid to do that. I encouraged her to take a look at the Compassionate Friends, which mm -hmm. is a great pl place for uh, parents, siblings, and grandparents to and, uh, and, conferences. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to ask Pat is she looked at her own grief. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's so focused on her sister, but the reality is she's she's lost her niece. Right. And and I know, and I think her her sister obviously needs a lot of support. That was her daughter. But sometimes we feel like we can't even own our own grief, you know, because, you know, maybe as an, an aunt, she feels like, you know what, I don't even have the right to grieve because my sister's lost her child. Mm -hmm. And maybe she also needs a little bit of her own grief work because I'm sure she had a relationship with her niece who's now dead. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, honor your own grief, honor your life. And, uh, I, and I also think it's great that <clears throat> Pat, we were out at dinner was able to bring that up and talk about it yeah. and, you know, approach that because um, you can only help people if you understand what their problem is. And if we, if we share those things together, because there is a lot of love and support out there. I agree with you. I'm glad she reached out to you because you, you can certainly identify and understand. I mean, you lost your own son and the fact that she told you was, was it took a lot of courage and my heart goes out to her and her sister. Heidi, and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And thanks for watching and listening to this podcast today. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.